Yes, sir. Solutions needed. Yep. I mean, for example, if we have Mm -hmm. Is it Mahama Yariga and the rest? Uh, we have, um, of course, there was um, an interview that was granted to pressmen by the, <coughs> is it the Zabila MP? Yeah. That's uh, Kletos Afwaka uh, <coughs> saying that the yeah. government, but I know that from my sources in the security sector, they also say that they've been having missions there and sometimes their rifles <coughs> or sometimes their machinery mm -hmm. that you, um, um, sometimes you hear MG3s. There have been videos that I have and you'll be hearing she multiple rounds, yes, you know. Yes. So, I mean, we need to speak the language of making sure that every side of this conflict um, gets to have a listening ear, but also get to hear what we're saying. Sure. How, how do we make sure there's a truth? Roland, before I um, go into the topic, let me first of all say uh, a good morning to His Excellency, the former President, John Romani Mahama. Um, over the weekend, on Sunday, we met at the National Mosque where the various groupings of the Muslim faith... You were there? I was there. Uh, the various Muslim group of the Muslim faith met the Ahmadiyya, Ahl Sunnah, Shia, Tijani. All of us basically met at the National Mosque. You would recollect that... Um, you would recollect... You don't see them as hypocrites again. You would recollect <laughs> that um, the National Muslims Conference head by the national chief imam basically submitted a 14 point manifesto to all the political parties and uh, john romani mahama his excellency adopted 12 out of the 14 and added some extra six and they thought that it was actually beautiful to to invite him over to come and grace the final program which was done on sunday he donated a pickup to the zakat fund and then some motorbikes to the muslim zongo communities um, media houses we just want to say thank you to him and then this morning i'd like to say thank you to my dad sheikh umar ibrahim the national imam of the sunni muslims i just want to say thank you to him mashallah roland <coughs> so i listened to alfred thompson his and, argument is and then he says that it's an ndc um the constituency yes, yes, yes. so it's an ndc place and then we are stoking fire i mean wisdom will not pick that i mean if this is our house and it is our space. Why burn it? I don't understand. He says that, you know, the entire area, you know, nobody wants anybody to enter and blah, blah, blah. And I'm saying that. We admit that the Kusau land, as we speak today, five out of those seats is for the NDC. One is what is, you know, in the hands of the NPP. Mm -hmm. The question I'm asking is that, why would the NDC that has majority of seats in that area decide for whatever reasons, to stoke fire so much such that we could even be. Oh, can you? When you're speaking, I'm. No, 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 no. I mean, it's a simple question. Please. Why would we? Why would we want to stoke fire, to create chaos, so much such that we'll give you an advantage to want to say that you want to do a state of emergency and then we won't even have votes, you know, being casted? It doesn't make any sense. I mean, wisdom doesn't pick it. You see, what these uh, half-brothers keep doing, and we keep talking about these things, and people are not really paying attention, is that they are very, <coughs> very, they are very, very cunning. Let me give you an example. Mahama Yariga, his father is Kosao. His mother is from Mampusi. What does the NDC benefit in creating chaos between these families when they know amongst the NPP, there are leading members of the MPP whose family members come from both. What wisdom is there in that? Mm. Then he says that these people, they have a problem. And every time when it's election year, and, and, and what of that, and, and on, on, on. Listen, listen. When you're given leadership, you've been given something. You've not been given it. It's not a barbecue. When they give you leadership, you've been given a position to stand and fight for the people. That's yeah, what a position of responsibility. Responsibility. But somebody to say so uh, to uh, those positions held mm. by NDC MPs. I'm not disputing that. I'm not disputing totally. I'm saying to you that the NDC would have nothing to gain to create chaos. Because we hold five of those seats. But you see, the MPP has a strategy for these elections. They say we would win these elections by any means necessary. So we can have a conversation about what happened, for example, in voter region. Let's displace the people. We can have a conversation about the things that are happening with the Electoral Commission. Let's create chaos. 
we can have a conversation of what is happening in Boko as we speak right now. Let's create confusion. In every way, they can find a way to reduce the number of votes that the NDC would have. They are basically on that tangent. If not, the spillage in, 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 in Volta region doesn't actually make any sense. What is going on in Boko doesn't make sense. Did you know that the Dagbon, the, the, the case of Dagbon was actually far more volatile than what we're currently having in Boko? Roland, how can you have settlement between two rivals when you can't bring them onto a table to have a conversation? How, how can you do that? There needs to be conflict resolution. I mean, it's, it, it's just, co it's just so common So you're sense. saying that we're not looking at the root cause of the problem? Roland, if their interest, if the MPP's interest and the president's interest and his excellency Baumia's interest is to resolve this issue, trust me, the issue will be resolved. Why Baumia? What has he done to you? He's the vice president. He goes around that area, he campaigns. Everybody goes around that area, they campaign. He has a responsibility as a vice president. He, he, he's he's a, 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 a son of the Bampusi. He belongs to one faction. How does he feel having his members murdered and having families from his family who probably have members from the Kusas who are also family members of his being murdered? How does he feel? as a vice president. How difficult is it for the vice president to get up or the president to get up and say, you know what? The Kusas, come here. The Mampusis, come here. Nairi, where are you? Overlord, come, please. You know, the Kusas, come. Let's sit down, let's have a conversation. What do you want? How would you resolve this issue? What is the way forward? Allow them to vent until you come to a solution. How do you have two separate leaders fighting and then you expect that those that are beneath them would actually follow? How is that possible? And Bagman gave you a typical example recently. Which is what? In Parliament, when you said, you know, we're synodai. Because obviously, what is happening is that if both parties cannot agree, then certainly what you intend to do is that you want to have a conversation. You want to be able to come back, sit back, and look at how you're going to relate to the issues. I am telling you on authority that if the government intends to resolve this issue, they will. They will. The only reason why they're not doing that is because they want to create more chaos and see how the place can actually be left as volatile as it is so that in December, we would have a lot more issues to deal with. But my, my, my call today is like the call that the former president indicated yesterday. He indicated, look, we are one family. The man proceeds, the Kusas, we're one family. We marry into each other. When you kill one person from the other side, you're actually murdering your own. That's what it is. And I give an example of Mahama Yariga. His father is Kusas. His mother is Mampusi. What does, what, what do we benefit in creating this chaos? What do we get?